This is Rachel. It is Sample Thursday. Um, this week we're going to be looking at something that. This is Rachel. It is Sample Thursday. Um, this week we're going to be looking at something that we did touch on earlier this year, but um, I felt was quite important um, because, well, because I know that eating disorders can be incredibly um, isolating, um, but I struggle to think that there's particularly anybody out there um, who doesn't know somebody with an eating disorder. And when I say that, I don't necessarily mean in their day-to-day -day life. Um, the majority of people that um, I communicate with um, do know other people who have eating disorders. And what I wanted to do today was to look at the kind of pros and cons of that. Um, I don't know which one to start with really because from my experience I've had both positive and negative experiences with known people um, with eating disorders and other mental health problems. Where I should perhaps start is, is perhaps the different places that people um, get to know other people with similar struggles. One of them is um, being taken into hospital, being put in an environment where you are with other people with other mental health problems. If you're on an eating disorder unit, you're on a unit with other people with eating disorders. Um, that wasn't the first time or first way that I got to know other people with eating disorders. The first way I got to know people with eating disorders was through an internet forum. Um, this forum quite literally saved my life um, and I will be eternally grateful to the young woman <laughs> who um, opened the site. It's where I've met some of my closest friends, friends who I still have, friends who I met way, way back in 2001, people who I will always remember and even if I'm not in touch with all of them, I will always remember them. That experience for me was terrifying because it meant other people were having the same problems that I was having. But it was also incredibly, it was a relief. When I first got ill with anorexia, I did find a couple of sites. I, I'm not going to mention the person's name, but she is a friend on Facebook. Um, and she had a site to do with eating disorders and her struggles and she used to put her poetry up there and we became kind of pen pals which sounds a bit kind of um, archaic in today's society but we used to write letters back and forth to one another she was struggling I was struggling and there was kind of a connection there because we tried to understand one another we tried to support one another and that was my first real contact with somebody it wasn't face to face but it was through internet through email, through letters to one another. I can imagine there were pros and cons of that. Um, a lot of people close to me had, had the idea that I was getting ideas. I think around this time, around 2001, was when the whole pro Anna thing started to get a bit of kind of news coverage and people were becoming aware that it was kind of out there. And um, what what troubled the people close to me because they knew I was online was that I was getting myself involved in all of that. What I will say is that I wasn't and I predominantly used this one um, use safe haven, this one forum which is still going to this day. Um, it was very, very easy to access pro-anorexia websites at that point. I didn't understand it so I didn't really use it because I didn't really connect to it, it didn't particularly make any sense to me. And it was then when I when I was taken into hospital that I got to know other people. What was actually a real blessing for me, the first time I went into hospital, is there was no EDU. I was in a private hospital, the EDU had been closed, there was, there was, well, there was a boy in there who was anorexic, a guy, and there was another woman, she was moved because of the severity of her bulimia. And so a lot of the people who I got to know in there had, a, when I say a variety of issues, I mean like every kind of mental health problem you can you can you can think of. Kind of different, but everybody is different. But it really opened my mind up, and I I think being around people who were normal with food was a complete blessing. And okay, I wasn't exactly completely normal by the time I came out of there or anything. But having that around me 
took that kind of impact off and that's actually something that they're doing at the moment. Um, they started to allow some of the, they've now opened meeting disorder units, some of the eating disorder patients to come downstairs and be with where the adults, ad addicts in the general site were. And from what I heard of them, it was kind of a relief to get out of that environment where you can be on an EDU when you're just with people who are eating disordered. And whilst it can be a huge support because you don't feel alone, you've got people who understand what you're going through, in my experience from talking to other people, from personal experience, that it just becomes too much. It just is like, you know what, I need to just be able to eat my meal and just, just go off and do something, talk to somebody about, God knows, I don't know, talk about just something which isn't to do with thinking about the food I've got in my stomach, thinking about, you know, how I feel about it and just going and distracting in a positive and healthy way. And this is what began to happen in the hospital. And it was actually really amazing to see. And you, through this process, you kind of see people coming out of themselves that bit more because they're not just stuck in, in, in that eating disorder unit place, but they're not just in with all these people with these same intense difficulties when it comes to food. The of, of having that distance through the internet is that you can kind of dip in and dip out and you can kind of dip in and, and relate and connect and write and share but then you can bring yourself back into your own world and you can maybe engage with your pet or with your little niece or whoever and that is something that I think is really, really positive. Um, being in a hospital, in my opinion, on an EDU isn't particularly productive. I, I speak to a wide range of people who really struggle with that idea because it is, it's so... It's too much. It's too intense. And I've known a lot of people go into hospital and actually come out more disordered because of the connection. So keeping keeping friends with people who you've been in hospital with, if they are in a similar place to you with regards to recovery, I think it can be incredibly powerful, incredibly helpful. And this goes for people you know online, people you know in real life, or however you know them. If you're both kind of moving forward and taking the steps that you need and taking responsibility, it actually allows a very positive relationship to flourish. And your friendship can actually be that. It can be a friendship because you are taking equal responsibility. And when things get tough, you call each other on it. But that you're close enough and your friendship is strong enough that it isn't taken negatively or if there is conflict, that it is actually resolved. The same can be when you're really, really struggling, and, and this is this is where the, the, one needs to be most careful, I think, um, because it's all well and good having support when people are in the same place as you, but I do believe that it needs to be carefully moderated, and this is what happens on a number of different forums. Um, I was involved in a forum where I actually moderated things myself as well because I think that when you're in a distorted mind it's, it's very difficult sometimes to know the appropriateness of what you're saying and I think sometimes things can be said because they need to be said but it does it, it needs to be taken into account and, and forums or what have you need to take some sort of responsibility for that and you know the internet is this huge, huge, big space, and I see it a lot in various places where people are posting emaciated pictures or pictures of themselves harming or what have you, and all this type of stuff to me is a very, very negative side, and it concerns me greatly, and it might not trigger me, it might not trigger the next person, but there's a lot of vulnerable people out there who it does trigger. And those people can't be judged for triggering them. They can't help what triggers them. And so if you're friends with somebody and you're both struggling, I think there has to be... You have to be careful. That, that, that's all I'll say is that you have to be careful. And, and I think a lot of people nowadays have enough awareness and enough education that and enough insight even, even when they're very poorly, to understand and appreciate when they're impacting another person. And so 
that in itself is reassuring and I do see that. I see that across the board. I see that in the videos that I make in blogging and I think it's essential that 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 people continue to take that responsibility for themselves, that even if they're poorly, that they can understand the impact they may be having on people close to them in terms of triggering one another. And you're getting to a place of really, really tackling your eating disorder, um, and you're in a place of recovery and quite far up on your recovery. That, again, is another point of in incredible and intense vulnerability. And it as is at that point, and a lot of people may have experienced this, where suddenly you're cut out of somebody's life. I've had it done to me, and unfortunately, I've had to do it to other people. I'm not here to judge why other people did, did that to me. It has been incredibly painful when people have, especially when it's been somebody who's been an incredibly good friend. If I felt the need to do that myself, I have tried with everything that's within me to explain that to the person. I go through phases whereby if I start that when I was initially recovering, I have to be very, very careful because I did get myself involved in some circumstances that were incredibly distorted and disordered where I got incredibly hurt and I was attacked incredibly personally and it becomes very easy to attack somebody over the internet and that's why I'd say be careful with the contacts that you're making when you're making contacts with ill people. You, you, you have to be careful because illness is illness and it doesn't mean that it's the person who's attacking you but their illness can make them behave in ways that can be manipulative and rather abusive. It doesn't mean that they themselves are abusive but it means they're behaving in quite an abusive and impulsive and nasty way. That's something I've experienced time and time again. It's something I know other people have experienced and so you need to be wary of that. Um, and. I have been at points where I've said I need to walk away, I need to step away from this from this arena and actually when I went back to university I studied something, I'd never wanted to study psychology anyway, but I studied something completely different that challenged me in a million different ways but allowed me to dip in and out of my experiences of having an eating disorder and self-harm and depression and all the rest of it and that was really, really helpful and it's only as I recovered and recovered and recovered and I kind of moved away from that whole internet, eating disorder society, I wasn't going to any support groups anymore, I wasn't in treatment specifically for my eating disorder. I moved on from a lot of that and that itself was incredibly liberating and I think that we all need that period of time in recovery from an eating disorder where we step away from everything that's attached to it and we can just be ourselves. And I did that and I went travelling and I did things, you know, took photographs, set up my own photography website, I did things that had nothing to do with my eating disorder. A few years later, Having had that distance, I decided I did want to go back into it and I did want to do advocacy work and education work and support work and psychology and become a clinical psychologist. And that, and it's taken me seven or eight years to get to this point and now I'm at a point whereby I can interact with people across all the scale from very ill to well. And I've learned from a lot of therapy to be able to separate um, that if I'm supporting a person who is struggling, I can say, this is my piece of advice for you, but then walk away from it. People who I was very good friends with in my early days of recovery who still struggle, I really struggle to have contact with because it hurts. It doesn't need any deeper explanation than that, but people who were very good friends of mine at a point when I was relapsing or in recovery who are still very ill, I really struggle with that. and I. I I could judge myself for that, but I can't help that I struggle with it. And these are the issues that you're going to have, really. And, and relationships are complex anyway, but yeah, this is what you're going to, you're going to come across with, with people with difficulties. And what I will say is that today I am a very happy, healthy and content young woman, and I want to do everything I can to support and help other people in their recovery. I have a network of people around me who are some of the most amazing and inspiring women I will probably ever meet. And every day they inspire me to be a better person and they inspire me in my quest to help others and be a success in that area of, of application and, and education and awareness. And I'm going to go now because we've gone on the cave. Bye.